So today is the official release of Silver Ridge Peaks on PC, and I wanted to make a little quick guide for you guys to go over a couple of the main things that I think are going to be helpful for this map. So number one is going to be the different loadouts that I like to carry because this is a pretty unique map as far as loadouts go. Number two is going to be some general hotspots around the map. And number three is going to be a super quick guide to how to aim the longbow, which is a very simple thing. But let's start with the loadouts because, as I mentioned, this is a unique map as far as loadouts go. You can actually get away with just the 7mm and the 22 and you're just fine. So maybe to start with, you could run that loadout. If you want to set up some tents around the map, maybe some of the hotspots I show, that would be just fine. But you can see here, I'm also carrying the 20 gauge shotgun. And the reason is for one, turkeys actually tend to fly within shotgun range fairly often. And it worked out uh, very well twice on two different diamond gobblers, which you may have seen by now in the video from kind of the middle of the night. And yeah, I like to have that for the flying turkeys and of course to kind of hunt them realistically. And along with that, I do carry the turkey decoy. So I have four hens and a gobbler decoy. And of course the collars, the mouth collar and the crow collar. So of course the loadout that I have set up here is set for all the collars. I do have the distressed fawn for black bear and mountain lion and the elk collar there for the Rockies. So I have all that and a med kit and binoculars fit in there just fine as well. Now the nice thing about this loadout is you can swap out the 20 gauge for the 300 and not have to switch anything else. It's nice having the 300 being such a light gun, and if you're wondering, the 300 actually is a part of the Econ Valley DLC, but it's a fantastic gun, and maybe if you're more interested in the Plains Bison and Black Bear than the Turkey, you could do that. And of course, the 22 is still in this loadout. You can shoot the Turkey just fine with that, but I ran both. Personally, I like to have the 20 gauge for the Turkey, but having that 300 for specifically the Plains Bison is nice because they're pretty tough. So those two loadouts have served me really well during this creator beta weekend, but that is something I wanted to mention moving on to the hotspot portion of this video. All the information for these hotspots is just what I've been able to gather while playing on this creator beta, which means it's not a final release build and things could be subject to change from what I've seen. But from everything I know, these are some of the best spots to go to on Silver Ridge Peaks. So what I thought I would do is kind of identify a hotspot in each of the different regions on Silver Ridge Peaks. And that way we're going to get a good spread of species throughout the different hotspots. But I want to start down here in the southeast because it's probably the best hotspot. And really, I just want to call the entire area of Lake Prospect down here a hotspot. Because zoom in here a little bit. And there are just zones everywhere. Everything from black bear to plains bison, pronghorn, mule deer, and of course turkey are just all over the place down here. And the entire area is just loaded with animals. So, of course, near the lakes are going to be good areas regardless of drink time or not because... That's just the way the game tends to work. There are both rest zones and feed zones right near the lake. But even away from the lake, there's a lot of zones. And this entire area, from what I've seen, is a really, really good spot. Next, we go to Burnt Rock in the middle of the map. And as I just mentioned, anywhere near a lake is going to be a hot spot. But I really want to highlight these two little lakes down here in Bear Wallow Basin. Now, you can probably guess by the name that there are a lot of black bear down here. But the thing that I'm most interested in is there are a ton of turkeys down here, especially during their drink time, which is very brief from 1500 to 1600 in the evening. I had, I think, six or seven gobblers down at this lake. And while going to this lake, I had a diamond turkey fly by. And then I had another one actually on my way to this lake from the east side. So lots of turkeys down in this area, lots of bears. I've seen a bunch of elk as well. It's just a really good spot. And just tiny little areas like that can have so many animals. So we'll just keep working our way west to Prosperity Pass. And actually the spot I want to highlight is once again a tiny little lake down here in Silver Rise. And I have a tent right by it, but I put that there before I discovered the outpost, which just happens to be right there. But once again, tons of animals during black bear drink time. I think I counted 13 black bears here, which I think maybe the predator population may be reduced a bit. Uh, before the map releases but either way lots of black bear again lots of elk lots of turkey and i've also seen a bunch of bighorn down in this area so i think it's as far south as i've seen bighorn and it's a really nice spot once again it's one of those tiny little ponds that has a ton of stuff so moving up to settler's end this lake up here in swiss valley is probably the best spot just simply because it has some of everything i've seen mountain lion i've seen elk i've seen turkey obviously mountain goat and bighorn like this area and i believe i've even seen some mule deer around that lake so it's a kind of difficult choice for me because I really like the mountain goat, but some of these little lakes, especially down here in Cougar Watch, have a ton of animals. Black bear, mountain lion, uh, bighorn, again, they're really good, but this lake in particular, it just has everything. And then we have the Crooked Hills region, and again, all the lakes are going to be good. And I would have called these two lakes my favorite up until I did my live stream. But then I finally made my way up to the Tufons region, and you can see all the hunting pressure up here. We shot a ton of stuff. There's everything from mountain lion to mountain goat. We saw a bunch of bighorn, a couple of herds of elk and mule deer. Turkeys are up here. 
it just has a ton of animals, and I believe it's the same um, kind of diversity as the area in Dinosaur Hill. I just think it's better. I think there's more animals, there's more like huntable ground. It's very open up here if I kind of click out of the uh, map. You see the mountain goats just walking around here. There's actually a four right there, a four bedded, like a max estimate uh, level four, which we'll probably shoot just super quickly. But I mean, yeah, I, I didn't actually stand here in front of all the animals on purpose. They're just here. So yeah, it's a really nice spot. That is a 300. I don't think I should shoot a mountain goat with that, but we'll get him with a seven mil. Just since he's actually a nice one. And I think I forgot to mention black bear in both of those two areas. This is a good spot for them as well. Like, I just love it up here. I actually wish I spent more time here on the creator beta, but I sort of missed this area right up until my live stream. But yeah, pretty nice mountain goat actually. And we're going to move on to the longbow aiming guide, which is very, very simple. But we're going to hop to the parquet range for that. So as I mentioned, aiming the longbow is pretty simple, but it's not exactly like having a bow sight. It's a lot easier than the recurve. I would put it much closer to actually having like a sight like the compound bows do, but it's not quite as easy as that. So if you would just aim with the end of the arrow, you'll notice we get a zero score there. We actually hit fairly high. So if we just zoom in with the binoculars so you can see it, we hit a good bit above the 10 and we were aiming right in the center of the 10. So basically, if you want to hit exactly you have to aim a little bit below that, somewhere in that area. So we're still just a touch high. We hit in the nine there, but I'm just dropping it down a little bit and it makes a pretty big difference. So we'll do that once more. And we'll try to maybe get a 10 this time. We have to aim kind of middle bottom of that top uh, blade on the broadhead. And that time we got it in the 10. So realistically, I'm not taking a whole lot of shots beyond 20 meters, but we'll take some further shots in this just so you can see it again. And this is 35. If we back up to this back corner, I think we can get to almost 40. Gets us to 39. So at this point, we're going to be dealing with the wind. But I'll aim kind of the same way. A little bit high, and the wind's blowing a little bit right. So that got us maybe a little bit too far left, but that got us a 7. Like, at least if we're shooting a buffalo, that's a kill shot. Right in the same general area. So maybe the wind's not doing as much as I thought it would. That's much better. So, again, not difficult to aim. It's no bow sight, but it's actually not too bad. I don't know if that's actually 60 meters. I never shoot that far. That's well beyond. That's 52. We might be able to make it almost 60. Nah, we can't get much further than 53. So we'll just kind of make do with that and aim just a little bit extra low. So maybe somewhere in there. So I couldn't even see where that hit, but it's a little bit high. So honestly kind of worth seeing. At 50, can you just aim with the blade? That one's actually a little bit low, so I didn't practice at 60 at all, and obviously 50 makes it a little bit tougher because you have to gauge in the middle, so somewhere towards the middle of the blade then. We got into the 6 ring that time, so at least a little bit better, and if you're shooting a big animal, that 6 is probably enough to make a kill shot, but maybe not something the size of that black buck target, so let's try once more. The wind might actually be a little bit more of a factor this time, so I'll try to be a little bit to the left. Eh, ended up 6 again, but a little more centered. But yeah, very simple to aim. I'm getting out to like 50 or 60 meters without an actual sight there. It's getting a little more difficult, but 20 for sure and even to 40, it's very consistent. And it's, like I said, much easier than using the recurve, but I don't want to make this guy too long. I don't want to take a bunch more shots. You get the basic idea of aiming it, and if you want to, you know, practice a little bit, try to figure out your 30 and your 50 specifically, since there aren't zero ranges for that, you can definitely get pretty consistent with it, but just with a couple of shots uh, prior, not too bad to actually aim and be consistent, at least at close range. So yeah, that is my Silver Ridge Peaks quick guide. I hope you guys can make use of it. I've got a video and a live stream planned for today, both on Silver Ridge Peaks, so be on the lookout for that. If you have any questions about the guide, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get to those in between streaming and making videos and probably just grinding the map in general. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Good luck with the diamonds and everything on the new map, and I'll see you next time.